Hi, I'm Joe. And this is my electronic assistant for the Void Conf test themed game, Inhuman Conditions. Two players take on the role of either an investigator or a suspect. The investigator's job is to try and discern whether the suspect is human or an android, much like in the Blade Runner series of films. And the science fiction novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Before the five minute interview section of the game starts, the two players agree upon a penalty card and a packet of themed questions which will help lead the investigation. Next, the suspect chooses a role, a false identity, to help obfuscate the difficulty in answering questions on the fly in the game. Both players then draw random cards from their respective role packets. The investigator's cards are simple, and they suggest questions and follow-up questions to ask in the interview. The suspect's cards, however, will tell them whether they are indeed a human, a patient robot just trying to get through the interview process, or a violent robot who is indeed actually trying to kill the investigator. The investigator's job is simple. Correctly identify humans and allow them to go back to society, as well as correctly identifying robots, preferably before they end up killing you. Naturally, humans just want to get through the interview in one piece, without being dragged away for three months of spinal taps and blood tests. This is, of course, the fail state for the humans when they've falsely been accused of being a robot. Patient robots, just like humans, are trying to get through the interview. Unfortunately, they have a few conditions, rules that they must follow. If they break one of these rules, the game isn't over, they just have to complete the penalty card, something which both they and the investigator know. Violent robots, on the other hand, oh, they're more interesting. They're attempting to rewire their cerebral programming, circumventing the laws of Asimov, so that they can actually flip out and murder the investigator. They do this by completing two of the three tasks on their cards. If they succeed in doing this, they jump up from their chair, slam their hands on their desk, and declare whatever cheesy 80s one-liner they think is appropriate. Some of the penalties are quite simple and easy for a human to do by accident, such as apologize and interrupt the investigator. Other penalties can be a little bit more obvious, such as snap your fingers and say three consecutive words beginning with the same letter, which can make some sentences stand out to the investigator. Sometimes the suspect roles and the rules on the violent robot cards line up perfectly. For example, if the suspect is very old, and the violent robot card says, mention three internal organs besides your heart and lungs, that might come across as quite natural. Other combinations can sometimes be quite tricky. For example, if you're a motivational speaker and you may not describe anything going better than it is at this present moment in time, well, that's just ripe for disaster. That's not to say that being a human is dull. When you're asked the question, what would it be like to walk on a distant planet and your occupation is a cult leader? Well, you can just roleplay all sorts of crazy nonsense to your heart's content. Well, it's probably best not to act too strange, just in case the investigator declares you as a robot anyway. Normally the game is played with a stack of identity compliance audit cards, a small sheet of paper where all the details relating to the game are filled out by the investigator. The release version of the game, as opposed to the print and play version I have in front of me today, offers rubber stamps to allow the investigator to quickly stamp a robot if they suspect that the other player is indeed an android. And this is where my electronic assistant comes in as a substitute. It has both a timer and a few switches and buttons to allow the investigator to really feel like a Blade Runner. Additionally, the rubber stamps and the process of knocking your chair back and slamming your hands on the desk as the violent robot have been replaced by large emergency cutoff switches. Not only are the emergency switches satisfying to press in the heat of the moment, they also remove any confusion in a dispute between who was able to perform their task first, the investigator or the violent robot. One final rule worth mentioning in the game, once the five minute interview has been completed, the investigator is allowed to ask one final question. This gives the suspect time to perform the penalty if they still need to, as well as giving the investigator one last chance to make sure that they are absolutely certain they're not letting an android loose on the streets. Inhuman Conditions is a great two-player game which is really quick to set up and play. It offers a lot of opportunities for fun and creative role-playing, 
as well as giving the robot player some really interesting mental exercises to perform. As another example, trying to have a conversation with someone while not being able to use the past or future tense can be incredibly challenging. Give it a try. Well, that's it for me. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please consider going to josephstrack.com for more nonsense. Oh, sorry. Subconsciously snapped.